Well, welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing how I uh, make a new hammer handle for this old Cyclone Nail Master 20 ounce claw hammer. This is an Australian made claw hammer head, uh, it's a cast hammer head. They're quite well made. Uh, Cyclone made a lot of tools throughout the years and still do make tools uh, here. So, in this video, I'll show you, I'm going to clean this up with the, the wire wheel soon. And then we'll go through a process of making a timber handle. I've been going to show you how I make these handles for a while. Made several floor hammer handles over the years, and they're quite easy to make. Probably the easiest hammer handle I find to make uh, using basic workshop tools. So come along with me, I'll show you how I did it. So, as you can see, I've cleaned that up with the wire wheel on my grinder there and cleaned it up quite well. Uh, you can put them on a wood grinder or a bench grinder, those wire brush wheels. They're quite good for cleaning up uh, some rusty tools, etc. Next thing I did is I cut out a blanket of some nice hardwood, some good Australian hardwood here, and um, I stuck some masking tape on the, um, the side elevation and the edge elevation. Now that makes it easiest for me to see the marks that I mark out. Uh, I cut this blank here to an inch and a half by an inch uh, piece of timber and then I've got a template in the background as you can see there. Now I made a template because uh, it won't be the last floor hammer handle I make but you should measure the eye hole of your hammer head um, before you go and use say, a template that you may have made. So the eyes internal size on this hammer head is one inch by five eighths and um, this template uh, the neck of it where it goes through the head is one inch wide so this template will suit this hammer head for the side elevation this is only for the side elevation I actually marked the edge elevation out free, uh, by hand um, this is just a style I like this shape so I make uh, these to that shape, they're quite a comfortable shape. Uh, I'll probably make them a little bit fatter than most people, but you can definitely narrow them down uh, skinnier than what I do. So I go through now and I'll make that out, and I'll mark at the edge of elevation as well. I mark a centre line on the edge, that gives me, and I mark some square lines around, so that uh, makes it easier to mark out. And you should end up with a profile on the edge that looks something similar to this. I'll just try to get a better view of that if I can. Something like that. And this is the other side profile. And then we go through now and we cut it out with the bandsaw. You could cut it out with a jigsaw, electric jigsaw, uh, or a coping saw, or a crack saw, or even a scroll saw of some description by hand if you choose to.
So I tape those pieces back on and then I cut the side elevation. So then I go back onto the side elevation and I mark a taper from the hand grip down to the eye end of the handle. I taper it down. I haven't put masking tape on this at the moment because uh, I can see it clear enough and I will cut it down in a taper in a minute. I didn't show the cutting down of that taper but I did cut it down and gave it a sand on the spindle sander. Then I made sure the eye, uh, the end of the the eye end of the handle was the right size and then I cut my wedge slot as you can see me doing now. Then we go on to test fitting it and once we test fit it and I know it's going to fit good I'm going to the next stage. So I test fitted it and it felt, fitted nice and snug and I had excess going through the head and uh, I'll cut that off later after I've fitted the wedge. But the next stage is now we go into the routing stage. So I select the size roundover that I want. I set it to height and I run the roundover bit along the side, stopping at the eye end of the handle before it goes onto the square. I adjust it again to make sure it goes deeper because I want a, a larger roundover on the side. Now this is totally up to you. You can make it whatever round over size you want, but bear one thing in the mind, the bearing has to run on the centre of the, the board. So if you use too good big a round over bit, you might cut one size to the profile, side to the profile you want. But when you run the bearing on the other side, it might go onto the round over part of the profile and it will make it a totally opposite, a different shape. So bear that in mind, the round over bit size that you use um, the bearing must not go past the centre point uh, in order to follow the profile of the handle. So I machine this down, get it to shape, and at this point in time, uh, I have to actually go away with my wife in the coming days, so I take this handle with me as I go away, because uh, I've got to go away for, to be with her for a week. Um, down south, she has some treatment. So while I'm away, I actually carve the basket weave pattern in that handle, on um, the base of that handle. Actually, the hand grip end of that handle. So here I'm in our little unit while we're away and um, I put some masking tape on the handle, on the hand grip end of the handle, marked out an outside uh, rectangular shape where I want the basket weave pattern to, to go on the hand grip part. And then with dividers I step out the size of the basket weave pattern that I want to do. Now 
I'm going to diagonal, uh, put some 45 degrees uh, lines across to mark the basket weave. And with that, with this size of the um, dividers here, I've made it so when it goes at 45 degree across, it suits a carving chisel width that I have. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you'll see what I mean when it comes to when I start carving it. How I've made them the basket uh, strands to suit the width of my chisel. So I mark both sides and then I proceed to um, put the diagonal marks in. I'll go through that marking out now and we'll see how that's done. You could mark these 45 degree lines with the combination square. However, the small com combination square that I bought with me on this trip uh, wouldn't sit good on the roundovers on the corner of the handle. So I just took the um, ruler off it and marked it out by hand. Didn't take long and uh, it was easy to mark the patterns out, as you'll see. I marked both ways, then I went through it and masked, marked uh, with a darker pen uh, and highlighted the basket weave pattern. Now you have to be very careful. I've already carved one side at this point in time and I made a slight mistake as I've never done basket weave on a handle before like this with carving. I've done it uh, a lot of years ago. I used to do um, the leather work and I did basket weave a lot then. but. Um, I actually got a little bit confused when I cut the other side. Didn't make a big mistake, but made a small mistake, which I was able to cover and look okay at the end, as you'll see. So I go through and I mark these out now, and uh, then we'll get on to the carving process. I mark it like this to mark the under and the over weave pattern of the basket weave. I actually got this idea, I watched a man, he carved a Celtic knot on a hatchet handle. He did a very good job um, and uh, I got this idea. I thought about doing a Celtic knot on this too, but I thought, well, look, I know basket weave a little bit better. So I decided to go with the basket weave because it was more repetitive. Now here you see me, I just rub out the pencil marks and it highlights the pen marks quite good then. And then we just go through and we start cutting, you know, stop cuts. I go through and I mark out what needs to go and what needs to stay. Otherwise you can make a desperate mistake here. Now on the carving, I put my stop cuts in using this little 8mm chisel and then I also use this little skew from time to time too just to clean the edges out. I use the 8mm chisel to come in on the angle uh, from the sides. In these middle pieces I just pair it back as you see I'm doing there. I get it from both sides and I come down flushing the sides nice and sharp edges with the chisel itself.
on these little side v-bits here I just bring the chisel in on about a 30 degree angle the outside is pretty well flush with the edge of the handle but the inside is about oh, probably two or three two 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 and a half millimeters down at the point So I'll pretty well go through and repeat all this right through to the end of the handle and if you stick with it, it doesn't take that long to do it actually so we'll just speed through this part and once we've done that part I'll show you how I just veered it slightly where the the weave goes under just to give that effect that it's going under the, the overlapping piece go through and with the carving knife I cut down beside the unders and overs that I've marked out in the pattern already You've got to be careful that you don't cut the wrong mark so here you can see me cutting 
where I've marked out with it. That's the under mark, so it goes under at that point. As you can see, it goes over that piece beside it. So I just go through and I mark that all out. And um, once I've done that, I use the chisel uh, and cut into that stop cut. I do that all the way through, um, taking care that I don't make a mistake. Now I take my chisel and I just undercut up to my stop cut so it looks like that band of the weave is going under the other band. And I'll race through that now and I'll show the finished product with that. This is the better side of the two. Now this side here where I point them to now, that's where I made the slight mistake. And uh, but when you see it later you'll see it wasn't that noticeable in here. Here I'm back at home about to fit the head. I actually um, round over the tapered part a little bit more and made it look a bit more uniform. I drive the handle in now and um, then we fit the wedge and cut the excess off and we go from there.
after fitting the timber wedge I drive the cross wedge which is an aluminium cross wedge, it's a die cast sort of aluminium type of material I drive it down tight which spreads the top. Now the top of the eye on this particular claw hammer has a chip on one edge so it doesn't look as though it squeezed it out properly but it really has and I'll show you that in a minute so as you can see I've sanded the top of that you'll see some of those dark little marks there I'm going to point them out to you now just there and beside it it looks like the timber hasn't connected with the edge of the head well it really has, there's a bit of a chip on the top of the eye there sorry about the footage there but there's actually a little bit of a chip right on the top of that eye and there's the finished product I gave it a bit of linseed oil on the handle and that's pretty well it as a finished product Well, thanks for joining me as I repaired this old claw hammer and made a new handle for it. It did come up alright. I did make a little mistake on this side of the handle with the basket weave because I'd never done it before. And when I first started out, I uh, went in and chiseled this one a bit deeper than what I should have. Uh, but it did blend in down the bottom there quite good, so it was a minor mistake. The second side that I did that you guys saw me carving, um, it came up far better. So I hope you liked the video, if it was a help to you, and if you liked it, please hit the like, like button, I do appreciate that. But until next time, bye for now.